Adding attachments. The next step after basic information is adding attachments. So once the basic info has been entered for either permit, the next steps here are the same. You'll upload any application attachments either by clicking on the attachment or dragging and dropping files onto the page. You'll then assign the applicable document type to the uploaded file by expanding the document entry and selecting the corresponding document type from the drop down menu. Some tips for adding attachments. In the right hand sidebar, there will be a list of attachments and the acceptable file types for those attachments. So make sure your file is in the right format. You also want to make sure your file is clearly named with the site and document type. This will help facilitate review of your application and will help you with selecting the appropriate file type from the drop down menu. Required attachments vary by application but are clearly identified with a red asterisk in the sidebar. Now we'll switch over to the test site and walk through these steps. After you've entered the basic information, you'll click on the attachment tab and you'll either click to upload or drag and drop files right here onto this page. As a reminder, this step is exactly the same for construction stormwater general permits and industrial stormwater general permits. The only difference is the specific attachments required. So because we are currently working on a 1200Z industrial stormwater general permit application, if we look over here in the all attachments required section, you'll see that a land use compatibility statement is required as indicated by this asterisk. The stormwater pollution control plan and checklist is also required, and you can tell that because of the red asterisk next to it. And down here, laboratory results are required. You can tell, again, because of this red asterisk. The required documents are automatically determined by the system based on um, a number of different factors, including the application type and the information provided on the first tab. So now that we know what documents we need, we need a land use compatibility statement, a stormwater pollution control plan and checklist, and some laboratory results, we can click here, select our files, and then they'll show up here. The next step is going to be to assign file types. So you can click this blue expand arrow and use the drop down menu to select the corresponding document type for this one, laboratory results. And for this one, it is stormwater pollution control plan. One thing that I should probably mention is that when you're uploading your files, you want to make sure that they're in the correct file type. And then also you want to name them according to the, or with the facility or site name, and then also with the document type name. And this actually facilitates review of your application, but also does assist with this step of designating the document type. I do know that I'm leaving this one blank, and that's because I want to show you what it looks like in the review portion of this if you've left a document type unassigned or forgotten to upload a required document. 